want to welcome everybody on behalf of the Carolina Panthers, Tepper Sports and Entertainment, and David and Nicole Tepper. Welcome to Bank of America Stadium. Thank you all for being here. I'm Anish Shroff, the play-by-play -play announcer for the Carolina Panthers. And before we get started, there are a few people I'd like to recognize. We'd like to extend a special welcome to our current players, to our Panther legends who are here, All of our honored guests, members of the media, and those of you who are tuning in and watching. We are here today to share how the Carolina Panthers are moving forward. And with that, I'd like to welcome the owner of the Carolina Panthers, Mr. David Tepper. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, exciting day today. Um, I'm excited to introduce to you our new head coach, Dave Canales. <laughs> Take a stand up. And our new, new president of football operations, general manager, Dan Morgan. I'm also thrilled to welcome Brant Tillis, who, served us, who, who will serve as our Executive Vice President of Football Operations. Brant is with us today. Stand up, Brant. His wife, Elizabeth, is with him. Um, let me tell you a little bit about uh, Dan and Dave. They're tremendous people, well-respected, and they are both connectors. Dan has 14 years of front office experience all throughout the league. When Dan was a player, he kept the defense connected and on the same page. And I've seen those traits with him translate throughout this building with everyone, including scouts, players, and coaches. He keeps everybody moving in the right direction. As a player, he had a relentless pursuit of excellence, which we'll bring to this organization. Dave Canales brings that same quality to players and coaches and on the field every day. He has a track record of bringing the best out of players. He is a connector. He takes the time to work with players to create an environment that will earn their trust and maximize their ability. Each of them brings experience from winning programs. They, sh they share the same vision for our organization or, and are aligned on how they will get there. Um, I like to ask Dan and Dave to join me on stage, but I also like to recognize Dan's wife, Ashley, and his family, and Dave's wife, Lizzie, and his family. So guys, come on upstairs. Statement, Dan, would you like to kick us off? Yeah, sure. Uh, first, I want to thank everybody for being here today. Um, it's a great honor to be named the general manager of the Carolina Panthers, uh, along with Dave Canales as the head coach. Um, super excited to, to work with Dave. Me, and Dave. me and Dave have known each other for many years now. And, Seven uh, years. Yeah, so. and this is a dream come true for both of us. Um, the way Dave carries himself uh, is a lot of the way that I carry myself, which is with honor, integrity, and we're going to work our butts off. So um, first, I, you know, I just want to start off by thanking David and Nicole Tepper. Uh, it's been great working with you guys. Uh, it's going to get better and better. We're gonna, it's gonna, there's going to be a process. There's going to be alignment in our building. And we're going to do things the right, the right way to build a championship team here. And obviously, it's a great honor to be named the GM of the Carolina Panthers after playing here seven years with greats like Mike Rucker. One of my best friends is here. Vinnie Churchu, he's here. Mike Tolbert's here. Thomas Davis, Jonathan Stewart, 
all these guys here, Musin Muhammad, like you guys are the best, man. Like and doors are doors are always open. Um, you guys are family, and we're gonna make it a family environment. And that's the kind of environment that me and Dave want to create around here. So you guys are family. We're going to do everything in our power to build this team the right way, not only on the field, but off the field. The type of character guys that we bring in are going to be guys that love football, play with passion, and play with the relentless pursuit of greatness. There's several people that I'd like to say thank you to. Um, Trent Kirshner, who's out in Seattle right now, he called me. 14 years ago, he called me and he said, I think you'd be a really good scout, Dan. And I, uh, I didn't know if I wanted to do this, this or not, but 14 years later, here I am as, a, as the GM. So I guess he has a pretty good eye for who's, who's good talent evaluator. So I thank him. Um, John Schneider and Pete Carroll, they were so much fun to work with. I learned so much um, as a young scout out there. I was the just a pro scout driving guys to the airport, you know, putting the work in. And John and Pete were just so, so great to work under. And, you know, to be able to, for me and Dave, to be able to, to learn under them is just, I mean, you can't get that experience anywhere. So I want to thank them. Uh, Brandon Bean, Joe Shane, and Sean McDermott, who I worked with in Buffalo, um, again, learning from great mentors, people that know football, people that know how to put an org organization together. Um, again, I can't thank them enough for everything they've done and they've continued to help me to this day. Uh, Terry and Kim Pagola uh, with the Buffalo Bills. Um, can't thank them enough for welcoming me in and my family in. Um, they, they're the best, uh, just great people, just like Mr. and Mrs. Tepper. Um, there's some great ownership in this league. Scott Fitter, I want to thank him for bringing me back to Carolina and giving me this opportunity. Um, Scott's one of my great friends, and, and I thank him for everything that he's done for me. All of the Seahawks and Bills players, um, I want to thank them. Because um, let's tell it how it is. You know, all the sacrifices those players have had and the hard work and the, and the dedication, we wouldn't be where we were if it wasn't for the players. I mean, the players are what make this game. And I just want to thank everyone involved player-wise for, for being great and, you know, just kind of developing the relationships with them. Um, I'd obviously like to thank my family, my wife, Ashley, uh, my daughter, Lexi, my son, Brady, and my youngest, Callie. Um, I love you guys so much, and I wouldn't be able to do this without you guys. Uh, all the hard work, all the dedication, um, all the sacrifice, you know, dad being at work and maybe missing some games. Um, but I, I thank you guys, and I love you guys so much. Um, to my parents, uh, I want to thank them for instilling the values in me, um, honor, integrity, um, hard work, dedication all those things that I carry with me to this day. And I just want to thank them for always being there for me. I want to pass it off to Dave. Thanks, Dan. Morning. Um, just what a moment of gratitude. What a moment of uh, just thankfulness. You know, I, I can, uh, you know, in the room this big, and of course for everyone who's watching, you know, I think we can all kind of think about the people who believed in us first, um, who gave us our first opportunity to uh, show who we are to express ourselves. And so first, I want to thank uh, David and Nicole for, for giving me this opportunity. This is a dream of a lifetime that Lizzie and I have had um, that goes back 20 years. Um, and really, you know, the last 10 years really honing this opportunity to get in front of an ownership and to sell a vision of who we can become. Um, it's in my DNA. It's a part of who I am. And uh, for allowing me to be me and recognizing that. So I want to thank you, um, Christy, as well, just uh, throughout the process. You know, it was um, I learned so much just in those couple of days, um, just how to interact and how to um, to try to just keep the focus on the things that are important and and feeling what your um, vision is for this team and feeling that alignment that's happening with Dan and I uh, to fit right into that. I'm just really appreciative there. Um, I got to thank the Bucks organization for believing in me, giving me a shot. 
I was in Seattle for 13 years, um, but I get my first offensive coordinator opportunity way on the other side of the country. Um, and so my family, you know, uh, Lizzie and the kids moved out last April. I didn't quite make it to my one year anniversary there, uh, which would have been February 18th. Um, so this part has happened really fast, but this is something that I've been working on. I really want to thank the Glazer family um, and uh, <clears throat> Joel and Darcy, Jason Light, Todd Bowles um, for giving me that chance, for uh, just letting me let it rip, giving me the confidence to be able to do that. I'm really appreciative there, um, which takes me back to my time in Seattle. And to formulate an identity, to formulate a football DNA that wins 10 out of 13 years to the playoffs. I just coached in my 20th and 21st playoff games uh, this, these last past couple of weeks. Um, and so I'm just really appreciative of Pete Carroll, who pushed me to think about the next thing. Just quit looking just at the quarterback. Quit just staring at the wide receiver's route. Open your eyes. What's happening with these combos? You see what the defense is doing? Did you notice we're playing a lot more of this coverage this camp? Open your eyes. Think bigger. Be prepared. I can't thank Pete enough. Um, and uh, I'm going to miss a bunch of other names. But at that point right there, I just want to also just thank the players um, the guys who, who really just did a fantastic job in it, and most recently, you know, Russell Wilson, Geno Smith, Baker Mayfield, these guys that I got to just spend so much life with um, to learn, to watch them grow as men, to watch them grow as football players. Um, it's their fault that I'm here. And that's the bottom line is, is it's, a, it's about the players. Um, my family. Um, just growing up in a family who's uh, just a, a family of dreamers and self-starters in Carson, California, the Canales family, and then my extended family, the Hendersons, my wife's family, who we moved to in Seattle, were with them for 13 years, how they walked the, the, hard, the hard days, the frustrating days in the profession, the frustrating and hard days in our marriage and our family, walking alongside of us, um, and just their undying support, prayers, all of my family members and friends that have um, been supportive over the years. Um, my kids, Ashby, Ben, B, Mai Mai, Amaya, um, who lend their dad to this profession for six months at a time. Um, but we fight for each other. We fight for windows. We fight to connect, um, to listen to each other and to grow together. Um, and finally, my wife, Lizzie. really her fault. 20 years ago, I'm the head JV coach at Carson High School. Fired up. I'm so excited. We go to play Venice High School. It's my first game coaching. She's sitting, sitting up in the stands with about 35 crazy parents. Um, and uh, we got smoked 34 to 13 that day. It was the greatest day of my life because I had found it. I found my passion. And after two years of doing that, she comes to me and she knew all I wanted to do was be the head coach at Carson High School. That's what I wanted to do, take it, get us back on top, um, try to win championships and do all that. And she said, hey, don't get me wrong. I love your dream. You're really good at this. I think you can go as far as you want, and I got your back. And I'll make it happen, whatever we need to do. And, and she did. And she worked three jobs at times. Um, and she told me the hard truths. Um, and when I had problems with players or coaches said, you know what you need to do? You need to sit down and have those conversations. And she's just been everything to me. This is our journey. This is our dream. Um, and we've been so excited and, and prepared for this opportunity. Um, so I thank you and I love you, babe. Um, so that's just kind of the journey. Um, how I got here, started off with the dream in, in high school and uh, that turned into junior college. And uh, at El Camino College, I learned the spread pass game from a man named John Featherstone, rest in peace. Um, and that's where I met Pete Carroll. And Pete gave me an opportunity to come along with him. I spent 14 formative, amazing years. I don't know if you've heard the saying, see a little, see a lot. Well, if you can sit at that same porch, you'll watch the world go by. Watch, watch the NFL world come through the trends, the changes, the players, the generations of players, how to communicate all happen in one place in one city, for me, um, just was a recipe for forming a really solid identity and a belief in a way to win. 
Um, and I was able to um, fortunately take that to Tampa last year and to show what can happen. Not what can't we do, but what can we do? Who are our guys? And how do we build an offense around these people? And I'm excited to be able to do that here with the whole team to find our strengths, make them second nature, to find our weaknesses and work them into strengths. And I'm so excited to do it with Dan, with Brant, with Mr. and Mrs. Tepper, and all of us in the building, really, that every time those players walk into this building, they're going to feel that intentionality. They're going to feel that this is about them. This is about building a place for them to thrive. And so um, I'm excited to be here and uh, to do this with you, Dan. Likewise. Um you know, just kind of wanted to talk about like the type of players that we want to bring in here and just DNA wise. Um, first of all, we, we, we need to find those leaders, those competitors, as Jay Stu would say, those dogs. Like we need some dogs. Like we got to get some guys that are passionate about football, that love football. They want to come out every day and compete on the practice field, in the weight room. We need competitors. We got to bring that back here. We got to bring that back here to Bank of America Stadium to where people get excited about coming to see our team. Um, we're super passionate about bringing a team that the fans can be proud of, um, that our you know, players can be proud of. Like when, when, they, when, we, when teams drive up to this stadium, we want them to fear that logo. The logo has to be feared again, because right now it's not feared. So we got to get that back. But I think it starts with getting the right type of players. And it's guys like you, like Thomas Davis, Jonathan Stewart, Hussein Muhammad. We got to get those type of guys. Um, we want players with grit. You know, we want players like Steve Smith, you know, play with a chip on your shoulder. No holds bar. He's not taking any prisoners. Um, we need those type of guys. Instincts and tenacity of Thomas Davis. And Luke Keekley, guys like that that can make plays. Uh, we need playmakers out there. We need competitors of J like Jake DeLome, um, guys that they're going to compete in everything they do, and they're going to be pissed off, and they're not going to they're not going to stop until they win. Those are the type of guys we need. You know, I, I remember in 2003 we had our playoff game here, and I remember those towels out there, the the white towels waving around. That's my dream for this organization. Talking to, I was talking to David about that today, and we need to we need to get that back, that excitement back here, and that's our goal: is to roll up our sleeves, work hard, and find those type of players that are going to help us get back to home playoff games and winning. And that's that's what we want to be about here. Mm -hmm. And for me, like just the. The marriage and the connection of it with Dan and I is just to create an environment, an environment that's set up um, that our players have every resource at their disposal, that they come in here and they got a plan for their body, they got a plan for their mind, they got a plan for their whole person as they walk in and that this building stops everything when our players come in and say, how can I help you? How can I serve you? That's the type of place that we have to be. Um, it, it definitely speaks to the coaching staff being developmentally minded. I don't care about what we can't do. What can we do? Who are these players that we have? And how are we going to maximize those strengths on a daily basis? We're looking for championship moments, championship days. And that's got to be a full-on commitment every single time we walk in here. Um, so for me, it's about building that culture building our language, making sure that we're using specific language. There's going to be a bunch of buzzwords being thrown around. I don't like synonyms. We all speak the same language, and we're heading in the same direction with that alignment that we talk about. Um, and I'm, I'm so excited to create that culture. Culture is what you celebrate. Culture is also what you condemn, and you say, this is a horrible-looking play. Look what happened right here, guys. Boo this man, please, somebody. And then, like, at the same time, finding great opportunities from practice, from games, to celebrate it. That's how you create culture, and I'm really excited to be able to do that. Um, the next piece of it is we got to get our football right. Let's just make it about the football. There's no storylines. There's no agendas. It's about good football. we got to play good football on both sides of the ball, be willing to look at it truthfully, and improve. 
and take the next step and improve and, and, and cap, capitalize on these moments to just see that growth and watch what it takes us. If we go after it every single day for a really long time, and for my players, I always say, guys, just get better the next day. Do that for about 10 years and look back and see where you went, see where you got. Um, and for me, if it was this simple, how do we do that? It's our football philosophy here. It's all about the ball. We got to be crazy about getting the ball on defense. We got to be raking at the quarterback's elbow when, we come, when, we're, when we're sacking the quarterback. Every tackle has got to be an opportunity to get this ball back. Offensively, everything we do from the protection calls all the way to how we carry it to our receivers transitioning and the quarterback, the decisions, all is about taking care of the ball. Plus one equals 82% win. That's a historical number. If we can just be one turnover better than our opponent, look what we can do. We'll set ourselves up for success. And that's, if I can make it that simple, what if I told you in the wild card round that the quarterbacks and teams that didn't turn it over won the game? It was as simple as that. We ain't even talking X's and O's and what the style and philosophy of our offense or defense is. If we make it about the ball, we can go as far as we want to and put ourselves in a position to be a championship team. Um, with that, I think uh, we're going to open it up to questions for the media. Yeah, we'll open it for questions. So if you would, please raise your hand. And we have microphones that we'll pass around. And as we call on you, or we'll pass to you. So please raise your hand. We'll get you the mics. Introduce yourself with your name, your affiliation, and we'll go from there. So our first uh, question will come from Steve Reed, followed by Carla Gephardt. Hey, guys. Uh, Steve Reed from the Associated Press. Uh, Dave, hey, certainly uh, welcome to... Charlotte and uh, Dan, congratulations on your promotion. I think you guys answered all our questions in your preamble there. But um, li listen, I, th I think fans want to know, you know, it, it, it's been six years since this team, it, it, you know, been to the playoffs. It's been eight since they've, they've won a playoff game. What do you feel like is the, pl the blueprint to get there? And secondly, most, maybe most importantly, how long do you think it'll take? I think it's, I think it's about alignment and process. Uh, we got to have processes in place and we got to be aligned in our building and we're all moving towards the, the same direction and that's towards a championship. So, you know, to put it simply, I think that we just have to, we got to roll our sleeves up and we got to get to work and we got to find the type of players that we want to, that we want to infuse into our locker room, into our building, get, get winners in this building. My timeline's today. How can we win today? Let's have a great uh, interaction here. Let's start talking about what football you can expect out of us. Um, and so today, this looks like a win for me. And that's just the way I think, just approaching every single day. It's first and 10. I got a new set of downs. My whole call sheet's at my disposal um, and got a bunch of fantastic people to go to work with today. Uh, it looks like putting a great staff together for me right now. Um, it looks like getting with Dan, looking at this roster, and really coming up with, a, with an airtight plan for who we want to become. Carla Gebhardt of Fox Charlotte. My question's for Dave. You mentioned your experience with quarterbacks. I want to know how that experience might help continue to develop Bryce Young in his second year. Uh, fun, attention to the details, first and foremost. Um, it all starts off with relationship, uh, Bryce and I just getting to know each other. Um, I want him to know that I have his best interest at heart. I want him to be the best possible version of himself. That's the same approach that I've taken since I've been coaching positions um, in the NFL. And um, that's really the approach I want to take with him. Some of, the, uh, some of the other things that kind of come to mind, thinking about the quarterbacks that I've worked with um, over the last couple of years is, we are going to become what Bryce is great at in the past game. We're going to grow to the capacity that he can handle. Um, there's got to be a commitment and a discipline about that. There was a growth curve there with Baker. Here's where we're at today. Based on the information we have, let's get into these situations to see where he looks most confident when I see that back foot planted in the ground and that ball rips out of there. Without any hesitation, I know we got something. Let's find more of those. Let's put it in three different personnels and a couple formations and motions. Yeah, David Newton, ESPN.com. I wanted to ask you, you, welcome first. I uh, wanted to ask you, what made this job attractive? And secondly, what were your thoughts coming to an organization that had fired three head coaches in five years? 
Yeah, so first and foremost, in Seattle, like we never were anywhere close to touching the first overall pick. And the more that I got ready for this interview and started watching Bryce, looking at my notes from his eval, I mean, that's just a year ago. You know, we're, we're evaluating him as a player, as a person. And with all the information that we could, I just got more and more fired up about the opportunity to have this amazing talent. And he's the guy. He's the right guy that, you all, that we all talk about when we have that quarterback, that, that franchise, face of the franchise type of player. Um, and that got me really excited. And then just on top of that, you know, the, I played against the Panthers twice and, and the job that EJ Evero did with the defense was really hard, really hard to deal with. Great sound football, playing hard, some great players in some spots and just the whole thing coming together. And then as I got to, you know, Dan and I have some history. So then I thought, shoot, if you look at some of the successful organizations, there's a dynamic relationship between the head coach and the GM. Um, and then, of course, as I've gotten to meet the Teppers, too, to feel their, com their competitive nature, their passion for what they want here, what they want to see when they come out to the practice field, and just kind of knowing I can be that without faking anything, without having to make something up. I just, I just felt more and more like this was going to be a great home, and, and I was really hoping, you know, as as they were sorting through the names that I would, I would come out on as one of the top candidates. Second part about, about coming to an organization that has fired three coaches in five years. Oh, I don't think that way. I'm talking about today. I want to win today. And so for me, um, coming into the situation, you know, same like Tampa is like, I want to look at what we have, what can we do, not what can't we do. And that's just my mentality. Hey guys, Scott Fowler, Charlotte Observer. I've got one for Dan and one for Dave. Uh, Dan, for yourself, I just wondered if you can talk about. You said you need, you know, more dogs, more good players. Uh, what that looks like specifically, like where you think this team is lacking and where you want to build it. And then Dave, I just wonder if you could talk specifically about, as a play caller, what you try to do because you sound very passionate about that and, mm. you know, deep balls, all that stuff. Yeah, I think I think when you talk about building the roster, Scott, um, you know, I think it's about it starts with competitors, guys that are passionate about football. Uh, we want to we want to draft guys and sign guys in free agency that are passionate about football, that love football. Um, we have a lot of guys in the locker room right now that love football and are passionate, but we need to get more. And you know, the dog part of it, we need guys that are hungry to go out there and inflict pain on their opponents. Uh, we, need, we need guys' toughness. We need physicality. We need those type of things. I mean, just to put it plainly, um, we haven't had enough of that, and that's going to be our DNA to where when people drive up to Bank of America Stadium, they know they're in for a dogfight. So that's what we want to create here. Uh, play calling, just thought process there, like, you know, we ended up becoming us. That's one of the things I was really proud of is just kind of looking at, like, what run game fits us best? What's the best thing for Chuba? Um, what's the best pass game for Bryce, you know, with, with the different pieces that we have um, on the offensive side? You know, um, we were able to find an identity and how to do that and win down the stretch um, to put ourselves in position to play good football and beat a really good team in the wild card round and give the Lions a run for their money there. Um, that's a really good team, a great environment and challenge for us there. Um, and uh, there were a couple games I got pretty hot there, you know, and this is my first time around, so I'm really excited to see the growth there too. Um, some people in the building that we have who have done it at a high level for a long time, you know, Jim Caldwell being one of those um, who's just got an eye for offense, an eye for this whole organizational piece. And I'm, I'm excited to, for my growth in the second year um, as Colin plays. And the mentality is, what are they giving us today? Um, and just being having that variety, having the marriage of the run and pass, um, things that start off the same but end up being different, you know, to have those those nuances and plays and um, and utilize my staff so I can have good information on game day. Dave, are there particular things you recall about Dan as a young scout in Seattle, his first you know, entry into that part of the profession. And how do you guys plan to create kind of that John Pete dynamic here? Yeah, well, we were about, was it one or two doors uh, apart? Two doors. 
two doors apart in the hallway down there. And it was kind of a little bit of a, a crazy, loud hallway for, for us. And, um, but, you know, what I remember about Dan in those times is just his conviction, his belief. Ashley, I'm sure you have a hard time, you know, thinking that he had an opinion about stuff. Um, but right off the bat, you know, just as a former player, he comes in and is like, he could just see it. He could just tell what a good football player was. And um, I wasn't, by no means was I an expert at that time, but I just, you know, I have a high value of my ability to evaluate. And Dan always had his opinions. And um, and it was very clear thoughts that, that he felt strongly about. So that impressed me um, early on. And then as we grew to get to know each other, it was just kind of like he was such a natural um, in this world of evaluating players. Thanks, man. Hey, guys. Joe Person back here in the fourth row. I've got one hey, for Joe. each of you. So I'll uh, start with Dan. Hearing a lot of talk about alignment, how much of that and how you guys wanted to restructure the front office and Bill, Dave, staff has to do with last season when there were lots of reports of factions among the staff and even going all the way up to ownership. I think it has to do everything with just moving forward. And, you know, we're not looking back, we're looking ahead. Um, we all want to be aligned, the business side, the football side, the locker room, the weight room, everybody on the same page, same mission, same vision. That's, that's, what, that's what I'm talking about when I talk about alignment. The whole building has to be on the same page. If we want to win, we all have to be on the same page. And we got to be communicating every day. We got to know the building inside out. And we got to, we just, we all have to be aligned, plain and simple. Dave, um, sure. you mentioned Ajero. What's your, yeah. conf what's your confidence level? Is, is the defensive staff going to be back intact? Oh, my gosh. I mean, just the respect factor that I have going against them. I know, I know this scheme going against it. I'm really excited to learn more about the ins and outs as far as how the calls come in, the adjustments and all that. I just know it was really difficult on me for years, uh, whether it was in Seattle going against the Rams in that family um, or this year just going against EJ twice. So, and this is, this is really important for me, um, especially as a, as a first-time head coach who's like, I'm here to make sure we get our football right, especially on the offensive side, that we have that continuity um, with the players, with, with EJ, you know, just being able to have the mentality that I saw that was really challenging to play against. Yes, I mean, this, this is, you know, for me, like what a huge piece. Um, of what we're doing. Dan, you, uh, right, right here in third row, uh, you, you mentioned um, other people telling you that you were a good talent evaluator. When did you realize that was where maybe your, your plan was after playing? Um, you know, I think once I got done playing, um, you know, you're always, you know, as a former player, I know a lot of guys here, mm -hmm. like, you know, you, you try to figure out what is the next step, uh, you know, who am I? Because you reach your goal at such a young age and then you're left retired and you're like 30 some years old and you're like, well, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? It's not like you can go in the corporate world and or just go somewhere and get a job. So for me, it was about getting in back into what I knew best, which was football um, to start out in Seattle and learn out there from from some of the best, one of the best GMs in the in the NFL. And then to continue that on to Buffalo and learn under Brandon Bean, like it's been invaluable. Um, they, they've taught me a lot, and, and they've really made me who I am today in terms of, of an evaluator. Dave, Dan, Jorge Andres with WBTV. First, uh, Dave, welcome to Charlotte. Thank you. Uh, quick question for each of you. I'll start with you, Dave. Uh, you mentioned a little bit of analytics uh, when you went into talking about the plus 182% for a win. You, we all obviously know the turnaround that Russ, Gino, and Baker have done. How do you plan to implement that, uh, those resources and those analytics when analyzing Bryce's, Bryce's uh, trajectory mm -hmm. and the potential that he could be? You know, I haven't really gotten fully into the details on that. Um, I, I watched a, a good amount of Bryce going into the interview process, but right now I'm going back through the games, kind of looking at the story of the season, you know, and, and the, the critical and pivotal moments in those games. So, um, you know, speaking about a specific plan there, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of critical variables. You know, I don't want to get too much into the football philosophy at this point, but um, just know, like, it starts with the ball. 
for me. Um, there's a way to win, win games in the NFL. It's defense. It's run game. It's an explosive pass game that comes off of that run game. And then in the pass game, it's getting that ball out in 2-7 or less. That's a critical deal for me. It's been, a, it's been a really important number for us in Seattle. And being able to just track that for decision making, for route timing, the protection and all that, it all kind of fits into this uh, really good brand of football that, um, that is complementary um, as, we see, as we go through the uh, season. Dan, this one is uh, for you. Uh, bringing Dave in and having the conversations to bring Dave in, he's currently uh, the only head coach of Mexican descent. Uh, it's no secret that the Carolinas in the Charlotte area has the largest Mexican demographic uh, in, in this part. Um, talk me through that thought process of that representation for a large fan base that is quickly growing year by year as well. Well, I think first of all, you know, diversity is a is a big part of what we do here with the Carolina Panthers. Um, you know, Dave just happened to be, you know, Mexican, you know, American, and you know, also a really good coach and a really qualified coach. Um, so I'm I'm really happy that he's here with us, and uh, you know, we're really blessed to have him. Guys, uh, Brett Jensen with WBT Radio over. There you go. There you go. Uh, Dave, this is for you. Um, in terms of you've worked with short quarterbacks in the past, successful with Russell Wilson, successful with Baker Mayfield, and you also had a very tall quarterback with Geno Smith. Is there a special way to coach shorter quarterbacks, quarterbacks under six feet, as opposed to a taller quarterback? I think there are certain challenges. Um, I'm not going to go and tell the whole uh, NFC South what those uh, advantages are. I think that's kind of a pri proprietary deal that we're going to own here. Um, but I will say that there are just certain things you can do to help. Um, there, are, there are ways to find what that quarterback's comfortable seeing. Um, you got a guy like Drew Brees, who's about my height, which is, which is still short in terms of a six foot seven tackle. You know, so whether you're 5'11", or whether you're 6'1", you can't really see over any of the linemen. So um, there's an approach to it. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, it's about decision making um, and just kind of making sure that we can have as many of our five eligibles available, available for the quarterback uh, from a visual standpoint. Guys, Kyle Bailey, WFNZ, back right. Uh, Dan, for you first, uh, congratulations to you both, by the way. You mentioned Brant Tillis. Uh, seems rather significant to be bringing over a guy who's been a part of multiple Super Bowls and uh, six straight conference championship trips. What, it, what impact do you envision him having and your working relationship? What does that look like? And then for you, Dave, um, you know, a lot of guys in your position, after just a year of calling plays, successfully, albeit, might decide, hey, one more season, you know, two more seasons before I'm ready to run my own operation. How did you know personally that now was the time for you to become a head coach? Or was it as simple as this was your only offer? You know, I think uh, having Brand here, you know, it's really a blessing for us to, to have somebody with the knowledge that he has, uh, how smart he is, how good of a person he is. Um, to be able to work with him every day and collaborate and talk about the roster and kind of fit all the pieces of the, of the puzzle together um, and to have Brand, you know, kind of work side to side with him, that's invaluable. So I'm super excited that he's here and uh, I can't wait until he takes all these coaches' contracts off my plate, too, because I've been having to do that before he got here. So I'm ready to hand that off to you now, Brent. He's been crushing it, too, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so for me, this is a dream come true. Um, I think the part that I kind of feel a little bit uh, compelled to say is I'm 42 years old. My wife and I have been together for 20 years. I spent 14 amazing years with an incredible, one of the greatest football coaches of all time in Pete Carroll. Um, so I got to sit there and just really just like formulate my plan and just wait for that opportunity to come along. And I just was like, uh, my wife and I just kind of thinking like, we're ready for this, you know, lead self, lead others, lead organizations. And that's been an approach and a mentality that I've had for a while. So when this opportunity came up and then I started seeing the pieces coming, um, I just got so fired up about it. And uh, I'm really ready to serve this team. Molly Cotton, 7.30 the game, ESPN Charlotte. Um, you talked about that alignment. I guess in terms of the alignment, even the power structure, what does that look like between ownership, front office, and coaching staff? Yeah, I think, it, I think it's going to be a strong bond. Um, it's going to be a daily communication between 
the front office, between ownership, between the head coach, and it's just alignment on the roster. It's alignment on just everyday thinking, like what are we about? What's the vision? Are we what are we doing the the best things to to reach that vision and, and that mission every single day? So it's just constant communication and it's just being aligned in everything we do down to the detail. Guys on your right, Mike Salarte, Spectrum News One. Dave, welcome to the Carolinas. Dan. Thanks, Mike. Congratulations. Up, Mike. It's, it's been Thanks. a jersey journey. Um, you guys talked about alignment and everything else, but you're both on a similar, I guess, timeline in your careers. Are you guys feeling any amount of pressure to try to bring this team back to where you wanted to go, Dan? I mean, you were part of a Super Bowl team, and Dave, I know you want to follow in those footsteps. No pressure, um, but a lot of hunger, like a lot of hunger to be great, a lot of hunger to get this organization back to where it needs to be, which is back in the playoffs, which is competing for championships year after year. So there's a urgency with that, um, that that we're striving towards every single day. Can I say I'm nervous? Is that all right? I mean, you know, let's be honest, you know, just getting this opportunity and I've got a ton of excitement about it. Um, I got a lot of things that I'm, I'm ready to to put to the test and that's been a lot of theory, you know, um, from a leadership standpoint, but yeah, this is a big task. This is serious for me. This is a, this is a great opportunity. Um, and so I don't take that lightly, but at the same time, you know, like Dan just hit, like I'm fired up about it and, uh, I love a great challenge and I didn't shy away from the Tampa job. And there was a lot of people that kind of looked at that and thought like, what are you thinking? You got a great situation with Gino in Seattle. And I just was like, I'm going to bet on us and uh, I'm going to look at what we do have and see if I can make the most. It's about maximizing. Mm -hmm. Somebody ran into me and was like, you guys really overachieved. And I just hate that term. Mm -hmm. I love the thought of maximizing, just getting every last drop out of everyone involved um, all together in a worthy cause. So um, I'm excited for it and I'm nervous, too. And I realize how weighty this is. All right, we have time for two more questions. We'll go in the back and then wrap up with Alex Zietlow from the Post. Michael Set, uh, Fox Charlotte. Dan, at the moment, you guys do not have a first-round uh, draft pick. How high uh, is it on the to-do list to get one? It's, it's not really high. I mean, we have the 33rd pick, which, you know, is essentially a late first-round pick. Um, we're just going to draft good players. And, you know, hopefully at 33, I think there'll be a good player there. You know, if we choose to move back, if we choose to move up, you know, that's to be seen. Um, but we're going to plan. We're going to have a plan. And uh, we're going to execute on that plan. Hello. Uh, to your right. Uh, Alex Zetlow with the Charlotte Observer. Dave, welcome. Dan, again, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, Dave, you have shown that you are... Uh, enthusiastic online and are willing to engage with the fan base on social media. Uh, when did that start? Is that going to continue? And why do you think that's important? Uh, just I think it's what's important to me is that we all grow to have a relationship. Um, and as we have a chance to get into more detail about what we're looking for from a football standpoint, my hope is that I can show you what to look for in what we're going to try to become. From a philosophical standpoint, of course, the, the whys and the hows, that's going to be depending on what our players are. My hope is that if I, if I put this out there and I say this is who we're going to be, that we're able to have this relationship where, like, you keep me accountable on this. You, you said we're going to do – we're going to play this brand of football. You guys are crazy about the ball. We had three turnovers last week. We were minus two or we were minus three. And I'll be able to say that's, that's a great point. That's not the kind of football we want to play. So my hope – um, is that we can kind of grow in that relationship as we as we have that expectation for who we're going to become. I don't know if I answered everything. Is there another part of your question there? <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Really appreciate you being here. Uh, now we would ask if the TVs, if you would make your way down the hall, we have an opportunity for one-on-ones with our head coach and president and general manager. And for our working writing press, if you would make your way to our media workroom, we'll have some player availability coming up very shortly. Thank you very much.